On opening soon by design, Union, an LA streetwear store with a hip hop vibe. We want the store's look to match the stuff that we carry. Owners Eddie and Chris get a high glam New Yorker to overhaul their space. I built it as a giant crate that you could walk on top of. But can the sophisticated uptown designer come up with a design that embraces the streetwear culture? I'm a little worried. We're both kind of in the dark on that one. In Los Angeles, California, hip hop is more than a type of music. It's a lingo, an art form, and a way of thinking. You either get it or you don't. In LA, music rules the school and hip hop fashion rules the streets. Eddie and Chris are streetwise retail partners. They call themselves a couple of hip hop guys. Eddie's been a fixture on the LA retail scene for years. He owns three other urban clothing stores. His new partner Chris was a well-known hip-hop DJ before he met Eddie. And they sell high-end streetwear out of their hot clothing store, Union. We consider ourselves part of the hip-hop culture, but I don't think it's what most people would expect. Hip-hop definitely has a sophisticated side to it, you know, with knowledge, political knowledge, fashion knowledge, art knowledge. Eddie and Chris think that being part of the hip-hop culture means being authentic. So the stuff they sell at Union is one of a kind. The brands that we carry here at Union, you can't get them anywhere in the United States. We feel like it's important to bring our customer something unique and hard to get. And they're willing to pay a little bit more just for that exclusive right. There's guys, you know, like me, you know, making a little bit more money and they still want to be part of this lifestyle and they're willing to pay a little bit more to wear the right gear. The lifestyle has turned into a global phenomenon and people pay a lot more trying to pull off the bad boy rap star image that hip hop promotes. Union gets their exclusive brand of hoodies, t-shirts and accessories from hot designers all over Europe and Japan and people line up to buy them. The big sellers for us for Bathing Ape for fall are their, uh, they do a zip hoodie. Out of a cool little detail that they do is, they make the zip go all the way up. You can zip your thing right up. <laughs> we received eight pieces, and there's probably at least 50 kids that want them. Their goods are in high demand, but their store was thrown together on a measly $17,000 budget, and it's in desperate need of a design overhaul. So it's really hard to display a $800 jacket in a store that just cost $17,000 to build. I mean, people really do know the difference. It doesn't give you confidence to buy a jacket of that price on a crappy looking rack. We want the store's look to match the stuff that we carry and to raise the bar even further, we want people to look at the store and be inspired back through the clothing. These kingpins of LA street cool need their store to match their vibe. So they've hired New York designer Harry Allen to give their space the facelift it needs. Um, Harry is all about high design and New York glam. His designs reflect a sleek, highly stylized aesthetic, and he's responsible for creating some of Manhattan's most elegant boutiques and restaurants. But can this sophisticated New Yorker embrace the LA streetwear culture? All I know is that these guys know a lot more about fashion than I do, and they know a lot more about street culture. Before Harry can come up with a game plan, he's got to go to L.A., meet the guys, and check out the space for the first time. Well, here it is. Looking old. Looking really old, yeah. Uh, by the way, this is Chris Gibbs. He just became a partner, yeah. so I'm, I'm looking to the, to the younger generation. I mean, what we need to talk about is where we're going to what we're going to do with it, mm -hmm. where we're going to take it. Mm -hmm. And my, my goal is always to like really take something as far as I can from a design standpoint. Right. Right. If I really want it to work for you as a yeah, store yeah, too. Yeah, but yeah. so it's what, I, what we need to decide is sort of where that's where it's going to fall right. between, you know, design and commerce. Right. You know, it's going to be interesting. Like, I don't think we it should be thematic by any means. You know, it should just be a good, organic, generic, you know, polished shop. For the guys, it's all about the goods.
What I want to get across is that you know we have a lot of respect for the brands that we carry, and we want to give it a, this, uh, a beautiful yeah, stage. For Harry, it's about, about making a name for himself in the design world. My goal is to, to create something that I feel really good about. Because all I wanted, like if, if I can get it in every magazine and everyone goes wow when they walk in, then you know, then I'm happy. If we look uh, into that wall right there, yeah. behind the it is brick. And well, I mean, I like all that. I like all that raw yeah. stuff. Yeah. I just get it. For, like, I just don't want it to look like every other. Yeah. You know? But but the idea <laughs> of doing things that are like designy. Yeah. See, I get scared of that, but then that's what I do. Yeah, you yeah. know, that's what I do really well. Then at the best Harry's the challenge but to create a space that will boost his rep, but that fits in with the yeah, whole so street we'll culture vibe. I'd like some time to actually do the design. Yeah. With their um, summer line coming yeah, in, yeah, the guys yeah, need yeah. the store done by June. It's going to be kind of tricky for us because we're, we're going to be receiving spring summer, but we're not going to put it out until we redo the shop. So we don't know how that's going to go down for us financially and stuff. So. With only a month to throw together a plan and a tight budget of $125,000, Harry's got a lot to think about. But I know that I have this big, clean, open space. We're going to rip everything out of here. And there's a lot of potential. So that's exciting. But I don't know what it's going to be yet. I, don't, I have no, no idea what it's going to be. I'm going to go to New York at the end of the month and hopefully sit down with Harry and hopefully he'll have some drawings for me. Opening day is three months away. There was no foundation under that wall, and that's part of what supports the second floor. We can't afford to be closed for two to three months. It could put us out of business. Eddie travels to New York to hear Harry's vision for his store. But is Harry's plan for Union universal enough to fly with Eddie? We have a lot of options on materials and yeah. systems and stuff also. My goal is to, to create something that I feel really good about, and in the process, I'll marry that with what they want. I've been paying a lot of attention to this whole street thing. Right. And the formula is the same everywhere. Right. You know, and I just think that you have a very sophisticated clientele, and, and that you can sort of, you can move it up a little bit without scaring them away. But that's Eddie's biggest fear. He doesn't want to turn off his loyal following. Yeah, I don't want it too designed. I want it to be a classic shop. I don't want it to be too trendy looking. Just generic, basic, organic, industrial. So then in, in the, the grand scheme of this thing, what we'd like to do is the left wall as you walk in, keep that brick and paint it black and then contrast that against a very finished wall on the other side of back-painted black glass. So that you have two big, huge big black walls, but they're very different in feeling. Does a black wall of glass fit in with Eddie's whole idea of hip-hop culture? You know, black is a big part of streetwear culture that we're kind of into, and it's punk meets hip-hop. It's a good color, it never goes out. It's all I wear. The wood component of it, I built it as a giant crate that you could walk on top of. And we can go back because... The crate would replace the cluttered storage area on the second floor and create a floating mezzanine so the guys can display more of their merchandise. You know, this is going to be the easiest thing to build. Just, you know, just like this really simple plywood constructed mezzanine. Um, like the big wooden box concept is great, but I think the space is way too small for, some, for an object that big. I would love to go beyond the architecture and think about the merchandising, sure. because I would love to take that whole t-shirt thing and sort of build it in and sure. make it flush, you know, so that it becomes like a graphic on the wall. T-shirts are probably about 30 to 40 percent of our business. And we've just been pretty much doing them conventional on a slanted shelving unit. Harry's offbeat idea for the t-shirts? Wrap them around cardboard squares and stick them in a record cabinet so people can flip through them. And then your initial thoughts on these guys? I realize you're going to need to go back and um, process and stuff. I love the idea of the box, mm -hmm. but I don't, know, I don't know if the space is big enough to have an object like that. Yeah, it I might consume the space, yeah, yeah. but I love it. Yeah, no, I know. Harry's crushed. The wooden crate was the centerpiece of his design. That's cool. But he's still hopeful that the guys will come around. I love it, and he's going to love it too, and he's going to want to make it happen.
Eddie has a few doubts, but he knows the amount of structural design Harry has planned will push Union to the next level, even if it blows his budget. I'm a little worried. Uh, I gave him a solid budget of $125,000, but realistically, in my past experience, it's probably going to be about buck seventy-five. So I don't want to tell Harry that, but in my mind, something tells me that that's where we're going to have to go with this, to get it to the level that I want to get it to and where he wants to get it to. But we're not busting his bank, you know, it's just maybe we're pushing it a little bit. Opening day is two months away. It's two and a half months later, and Union has finally been demoed. But construction is crawling along at a snail's pace. Opening was supposed to be two weeks ago. Demolition started oh, about a month and a half ago. After we demoed, we found some structural defects, and we had to wait till the engineer came up with new solutions for us before we could actually start with the building process. And since we're doing structural stuff here in the state of California due to earthquakes, everything is done with a permit. We're doing a mezzanine in this particular case. Therefore, we have to excavate the floor. And it turned out there was no foundation under that wall. And that's part of what supports the second floor. Because it's, the wall's holding stuff up, you can't just excavate under the whole wall or it'll collapse. So you have to like do it in pieces. So it kind of put a crimp on the whole schedule at that point. A weak foundation under the second floor means that Ben and his team are going to have to reinforce the entire structure of the building. So that's really what the holdup is. And there's more bad news. Oh, look at the water coming in the corner. Yeah, I see. That's, I, didn't, I never noticed it in the front. Wow. Well, that corner, we the might wood have to, is actually rotten up there. Really? Right? We might have to uh, put a tarp up there. Eddie is normally calm and collected, but with so much at stake, he's starting to lose his cool. Frankly, we're a small company. We can't afford to be closed for two to three months. It could put us out of business. It really could. Opening day is unknown. I don't like to compromise Harry's vision, but we went in and we edited. It's hard to believe, but it's six months later and Union is still a construction zone. Harry's plan to give the guys a slick new space to sell their exclusive streetwear seems like a distant memory. So what happened to opening in June? Did I say that? Whew. <laughs> it's crazy. There's a lot of people that are really excited. All of our customers, they ask us every day. It's, I'm almost like, I almost get mad at them. <laughs> we ran into the holidays and whenever it's Christmas, everyone just stops working. So we lost about three weeks of, you know, of production. Now the guys have missed their original opening date by over half a year, and the hype surrounding the new store is fading fast. So how are they hanging on? To offset the cost of time delays, they nabbed a temporary retail space just down the street, a space to sell their goods in the meantime. Nobody's pulling out their hair yet. We wanted to be open for this season. We thought we would. Uh, I ordered clothes for this season, but uh, we found a temporary spot for now. But throwing together a makeshift store has only served to put Union right back at square one. The design of the new location is even more bargain basement than the original, and it's hurting sales. The fact that we're halfway down the block, I think we do lose customers. It's a good thing they're making some money because Harry's budget is spinning out of control and the guys are paying rent on both locations. I don't like to compromise Harry's vision, but in this case, you know, I told him my budget was 150 and now it's at about two and a quarter. To cut costs, the guys have no choice but to start slashing Harry's design. What Harry designed was a lot more detailed than what you're actually going to get. We went in and we edited it. For Harry, mixing the black glass feature wall... It would be a disappointment for me, but we could not do that glass wall. Um, you know, that's going to be a huge expense. And it's the first thing the guys throw away. It's going to be so expensive. I think it was coming in at like 20 grand. Our walls aren't strong enough to support heavy black glass walls. So that got nixed. Harry originally wanted to do some kind of stucco feature on the ceiling. Obviously, you don't really need that to function in a retail space, so we knocked it out. One of the biggest problems is that Harry lives across the country. Harry's an easygoing person to begin with, and you know he's in New York, obviously we're in Los Angeles, so that makes it a little difficult. Because he's not on site, he has no idea that a huge chunk of his design plan has been, well, terminated. 
In fact, one of the only things the guys are salvaging from the original plan is the one thing Eddie had doubts about from the get-go. I love the idea of the box, mm -hmm. but I don't, know, I don't know if the space is big enough to have an object like that. I love it. It looks like a big space, wooden spaceship just landed in our shop. You know? So we end up going through the big box in the middle of the store. The top of the box will be our mezzanine level where we'll sell bathing ink. But the crate has created problems of its own. The main thing about this crate is, is the, the execution. The construction of the giant crate mezzanine has cost them more time. More time and more money. You have to add footing, you have to reinforce the whole thing. So that took a long time. Going back and forth with the city, it was very expensive. I, I'm confused about this spot back here. Well, this shouldn't even be here. No. With Harry due to arrive on site in the next few weeks, the guys feel yeah, badly uh, about axing some of his key designs, but they're trying to keep the faith. They're moving ahead with the custom display tables he created. We asked for some tables to be put in the middle of the floor, so when people walk in, we can display some of our maybe newer items. Harry thought, well, Cali, surf, and he suggested doing uh, tables made out of the same materials as people make surfboards out of. But is Harry's table design more beach blanket bingo than hip hop street cool? That was totally Harry's idea. We haven't seen it. We don't know, you know, it'll be the surprise. Uh, we're both kind of in the dark on that one. By slashing some of the designs and opening a substitute store down the street, the guys have managed to survive, barely. But how long can they keep the word about union on the streets? The main thing for me is that we've kind of hyped up our vendors and our customers on the new store, and we've been doing it for over a year now. And I wonder if people think it's actually gonna happen or if we're full of it. I don't even remember when we started this project. How's that? We want to open up with a bang. There's a lot of people that have been waiting for us to reopen. Opening day is still up in the air. I'm not happy because the design sort of got changed along the way. Seven weeks later, and construction is finally over at LA's premier streetwear clothing store, Union. Eddie and Chris are scrambling to set up the store in time for the big party. Oh, I know, it's gonna keep happening because dust is constantly so I'm gonna leave that till last. What was supposed to be a month-long reno has dragged on for almost a year. Since this whole thing started, Eddie and Chris have been plagued with countless delays and a budget that has more than doubled. We wanted to do this for like 150, and I think we're about at 350 right now. So what does designer Harry Allen think of the space? I'm not happy because the design sort of got changed along the way. And, I, and it's like, it's now to go back and like hash over was this and this and this. I mean, it's like that's, it's just like I look at it and I'm not really that pleased with it. With only 10 hours till the big party, Harry does some damage control, starting with the t-shirt rack. They're, I mean, look at that. I don't even know if we need them. <laughs> like maybe we should just get rid of them because th this thing isn't built the way I had originally sort of spec it. There were a lot of changes made on it. And so this wall is really strong and this wall is really weak. And this is the more important wall yeah. in a way, you know? Yeah. There's a lot of inconsistencies, like, and as I said, he has the eye to see it. You know, I don't, so that's why I'm glad he's here, but. I do feel like losing the glass on this wall like that was a bummer. It would have been nice to have had that on there. But he's happy that the guys kept the giant wooden crate and the custom surfboard tables he designed. They're really original. I love them. I think it's like a piece of art for the store. I think the store looks great. Like, I walk in and I think it looks great, and that's all you can do. The guys are determined to keep the word about union on the streets, so they've decided to throw the hottest party in L.A. They've invited hundreds of people. What up, what up? What's going on, man? We have a world-class DJ, his name is Just Blaze. And we have a special guest performance by uh, MC Most Def. While the crowds rock the house late into the night, Eddie looks back on the year and his emotions kick in. Oh, I'm just, honestly, I'm a little choked up. Because <laughs> this was money and just time and effort, like you wouldn't believe. But for Eddie and Chris, the true measure of success will be when Union opens for business the next morning. Word definitely got out on the streets. The lineup's around the block, and some people have been waiting all night. And what's your name? 
Oh. We have food. Uh -huh. We have waters. It's rather unique, man. It's definitely a little bit different than the norm. It's sleeker. It's more modern. It's it's basically what the store represents. I'm really happy with how the stores come out. Like a thousand percent upgrade. Well, they really redid the upstairs nicely. Oh, it's beautiful. They did a great job. The clothes are flying off the shelves, and Eddie and Chris are raking in the dough. Yeah, I mean, I'm happy, but it's uh, like there's always hype about the store, and people like the design and everything, but usually the hype isn't about what I've done. It's about what they're doing in there. Oh, definitely feeling of relief, and now money coming in. Yeah, no cash money flow. Yeah, cash flow. <laughs> so this is all about union and the hype around the clothes here, so... Thank you. Yeah, <laughs> it's yours, baby. This store now looks like, yeah, we can have a $300 jacket or four or $500 jacket, and it makes sense. <laughs> Thanks for everything. You are absolutely welcome. Right.